what up, son? We made it. What's up? How much, man? We'll just give it a few minutes for other people to join. For sure, for sure. How things been oh. otherwise, man? Not bad, not bad. How was work? It was fine. A couple of short shifts. And then I uh, got to go back in. I basically work every day at my, at my jobs. <laughs> I do really short shit. What do you do again? But I do data collection, basically. So I'm usually like, what's going on, Christine? I'm usually, um, it's, it's just inventory. So I'm usually like scanning inventory, checking up on inventory and everything. And it's like, okay. when I work, I don't do like nine to five type shifts. I might go in and do like, I have windows to do each of my jobs. So sometimes I might go in the work, depending on how much I got to get done, and only work for like maybe an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. And then other times I may have to go work four to six hours in that day. But very nice, very nice. That was about it. Seems seems kind of chill. Oh yeah, it's super, hello, it's super hello expensive. cherry blossom eight nine one nine. I don't. That sounds familiar. I don't know if we know each other, but she said hi to both of us. She's on my uh, well. She's well. She's like Christine's cool. She's she's always she's like on all of my uh, my lives and stuff. But she's always following the. Uh, the live streams and whatnot. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah, we'll just give it a little bit more just for more people to come in. So what else has been going on with you? Um, I don't know. I just kind of was, like, tidying up a little bit around here, trying to make it a little more presentable. Uh -huh. Um, I wanted to grab some of my – I have, like, these hemp cigarettes – Oh, oh, yeah. And you know what I just remembered also? I was on a live yesterday uh, with this rapper, uh, Expression, who goes by Expression. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I realized that my chair is really squeaky. Oh, so yeah. Forgive... <laughs> can, can, have you already heard it or on, on your end? Hey, what up, Katie? Well, it's not, it's not even so much that. It's because I, I noticed that shit when I, like, I'll be listening back to some of my cast or some of my, you know, appearances or whatever. And I'll hear yeah. my own chair. And the thing is, is that like, this is a persistent, this is a problem with a whole bunch of different people. Like the people that I follow, like you'll hear a chair or you'll hear like a persistent, like, you know, some type of noise or whatever. So it's like, yeah, just got to put some oil or, you know, spray that shit every now and again. Yeah, I just got some WD-40. It's around here somewhere because I got a new skateboard. So um, I'll have to do that soon hopefully it's not too much of an issue let me know if it is and then i can you know maybe we can just do an intermission or something i don't usually trip off i don't yeah it doesn't usually bother me and i haven't heard any real complaints yet okay cool there was something else that i was gonna um oh yeah i was gonna grab my hemp cigarettes i couldn't find my torch i wanted to like i was thinking about even smoking a cigar back here real quick but oh yeah how does that like because i know like with cigars Obviously, it's just tobacco, but it's like, and you're not supposed to inhale it. So it's like, what's the actual sensation? Like, what's the actual, like, gratification uh, from it? There's a light buzz that you get. And, you know, they say, like, oh, don't inhale, don't inhale. But you're inevitably going to inhale something. That's right. Kind of the, that's kind of the point. Um, I think it's more like, don't take a fat rip because, you know, mm. you're going to you're gonna cough and sputter. Um and also, it's, you know, the, the smoke is just really thick. Mm -hmm. um, unless you have, like, a super high-quality cigar, odds are you're smoking something that's fairly cheap. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? I had them around here somewhere. What did I, oh, here we go. Okay. These, these Dutch Masters. I was thinking about rocking one of these, but these are, pretty, these are pretty fat, actually. So I might just go with the hemp cigarette if I can find them. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm just about to... Uh... I'm just packing this little bowl. I'm going to go smoke real quick. And, uh... You're going to smoke what? get started. Oh, smoke a bowl? I'm just packing my little bowl. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to do that there real quick. Go. And, um, in the meantime, you can go ahead, since a lot of the people who are joining in are people who follow you, you can go ahead and let them know um, what's up, since we're, this is pr primarily um, you, uh, your inspiration. What's going on, everybody? I'm Sam Boy. This is um, It's All Relative Podcast, and I'm here with Ace Woe. And typically, um, this is We Was Live number six, which is a little live stream segment that we do, I do. <clears throat> and um, Ace has been on uh, a few times with me. 
and uh, he hit me up and told me that there were some things he really wanted to talk about um, mm. uh, related to rap genius and whatnot. So I won't spoil it too much and let a few more people get on. But Ace, while I go do this real quick, you go ahead and um, catch everybody up who's paying attention and shit on um, on what's going to be what you want to be talking about. And I'll be yeah, back in a so, minute. Yeah, so uh, we wanted to discuss political correctness. As I was typing that out on Facebook, I accidentally looked at the autocorrect, uh, autocorrected me to uh, uh, political directness, which I thought was um, interesting and, and poignant. So I just went with it. I was like, you know what? We're going to be discussing political directness and political correctness, both of them. So okay. So here, so here we go. Okay. Right. Hello, Ray Dazone. Ray Dazone. Yeah, to keep chopping it up with him, I'm gonna go do this real quick. Yeah, yeah. So, so for those who don't know, um, I am a contributor at Genius.com. Um, I was promoted. I was promoted to moderator in 2018. Um, courtesy of the great and, and wonderful Ewok, A.B. DeVito, um, who is a legend of the sport. Just have to love autocorrect. That we do. And um, yeah, basically today was interesting. Um, yesterday and today, you know, um, some users got into it with one another. Um, I'll, I'll discuss more specifics when Sam gets back, but in a nutshell, we will be discussing political correctness, political overcorrectness, and I don't even know, man. Honestly, I was I was actually pretty worked up about it. I'm not gonna lie; it was kind of frustrating. It happened. Um, yeah. So, I think um, this is the perfect situation. Hey, what up, John? What up, Hydra? Um, this is the perfect kind of way to vent to where I'm, I'm, I'm communicating with somebody who I know, who I trust, who is not going to pass judgment on you know, me or anybody else I I involved. And you are a very level-headed person who even though you, you know, we, we, I think we agree on most things like socio-politically, mm -hmm. Um, you, I feel that you have a way, a balance to your approach in, in not only your, your beliefs, but in the way that you communicate, which I appreciate. And that's the type of person who, who I prefer to communicate with about these types of things, because there's, there's touchy subject matter involved and, you know, people's feelings get hurt and shit, which I get, but there's lines that you don't cross, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, it's like... <clears throat> well, it, yeah, it's like... Um, everybody has different, you know, preferences and thresholds for what they can handle and stuff. And it's like, okay, it's great to say... It's like, yeah, and it's, it's great to say on one hand, it's all relative or whatever. <clears throat> things are subjective. Uh, but at the, no end, but at the end of the day... What would you say? I said no pun intended. No, but yeah, yeah, no pun intended, and not to just yeah, um, <laughs> and then also a little uh, you know plugging the cast and everything, but also that in order to a lot of people just like to say oh everything's subjective or everything it's all relative and everything just as a means of not really getting to the roots of the issue or not really getting a final answer. It's like we can talk about the fact that. <clears throat> there's a problem, you know what I'm saying? But if we disagree on the solution and everything, then at the end of the day, um, we, 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 that, that is the difference right there. You need, and, and, you, and it needs to be, um, you know, accepted as that, you know, like real quick, I was talking with another friend and we were talking about, and, and he's, he's a little bit more centrist and whatnot. And, you know, always look, look, look at things in the middle. And we were talking about some particular issue. And he was, after we had a little bit of back and forth and making our points, he finally was just like, well, well, you know, it's all subjective and we all have our different ways of dealing with stuff. And I was like, okay, but, dude, but, but, but when we're talking about 
actual solutions or choosing to go this way or that way. We're talking about what the ramifications of, of those are. So it's like we can't just say, like, yeah, we know everybody has different approaches. Everybody is all blah, 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 blah. But then at the end of the day, we still got to choose a path or paths to go down or a way to deal with the issue. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to be confronted. And some people just, they, like you said, they get in their feelings, they personalize it, um, they get away from actually getting an answer and just go about talking about what they think is right or wrong when most of the time we don't live in a space of, of being able to do the right or the wrong thing. It's being able to do the more, I guess the way I try to look at stuff is that there's, yeah, there is my emotions and shit and the relativity, but then there's also pragmatism. There's also doing yeah. what's practical, you know, and what's actually going to move things forward. Mm -hmm. But so, that right, being, let's, yeah. let's get into the nitty gritty here because um, you know, this is a situation like any like any situation where we're discussing people's political beliefs, where there's gray area and there's you know, there's, there's got to be a balance between between uh, cultures, I guess, the way people see things, where they're from, their backgrounds. Everything plays into, you know, uh, uh, everything. Well, okay, let me just let me just be specific here, okay? Because you actually uh -huh. don't know all of what happened yet obviously we wanted to we wanted to preserve the the topic for the for the moment mm -hmm. um, so basically um i, I want to be as, as succinct as possible but you know it is a little bit convoluted so so um again i'm a genius moderator um it's a community of of music lovers and 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 people who analyze lyrics and stuff like that but the, the moderation community on Genius, basically what we do is uh, we, we help Genius staff, Genius as a company, Genius as a website, uh, run and operate. And we do a lot of stuff on the back end, metadata and, you know, lyric transcriptions and stuff like that. Um, but there's also an element of uh, like, you know, Basically, we're, we're coaching other users. We're leaders in the community, basically. So uh -huh. there's there's another moderator by the name of Daktar, or his username is Daktar. And I hope he doesn't mind me discussing this. I don't think he will. I know we're, we're, we're friends. We're good friends. Um, I consider him to be a good friend. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about it because we're, we, the whole thing was free speech, essentially. It boiled down to uh -huh. free speech. So Daktar right. is from Texas. Obviously, a uh, conservative state, typically. Um, I'm not going to give you his whole background, but he is he is a Trump supporter. We obviously disagree on that, and <clears throat> despite despite our differences, you know, we we are friends, and we have have remained civil in our ability to discuss, you know, various goings on. So. Um, he, the, let's say, let's see, back in September, he posted a meme on his personal Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I almost wish that I had sent it to you before this, so that you could just see it in almost an unbiased way. But yeah. nonetheless, um, you know that, you know that cat meme where there's like a cat sitting in a chair and like his head's poking out above, it's like he's at a restaurant or some shit. It's like a white cat. Y you've seen this meme and he's got all like, the ones Oh yeah, and then the other, and then the next panel is um this is you know this um this white woman who's uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Know, react to yeah 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 oh yeah I actually don't even know what that's from to be honest I have no idea the oh it's a meme I that. mean well yeah I don't know the origins either uh, it'd be, I'm assuming it was origins. like a TV show a reality show or some shit no well the thing is the cat I think originally I mean I could pull this up right now but I but I think that the cat the cat thing I don't think it was even related to that I think that like in a series of memes, in a series of memes, um, for whatever reason, somebody putting the cat in there in this situation in which it obviously, in, in the situation where it obviously wasn't because it was from something else. It's just a natural, like, it, it's kind of like it's asking, like, like, oh, where, where does, where does, you know, certain musical genres and shit have no real single correlation. origin point? Yeah, they don't have one single origin point or they come from a bunch of different converging ones. So it's like, Sometimes it's impossible to talk about like the actual originator or origins of you know yeah. certain shit. And I and can only particular... assume there's an there's an element of absurdism to that meme, right? Like the the original yeah. original, and then of course mm -hmm. memes become um, uh, recycled and stuff, and then they they take mm -hmm. 
they take the letters out, they add new letters or new phrases, yeah. new sentences, whatever, new meanings. Mm -hmm. So, okay, in this particular meme, the essential message was like on the top bar, it says, um, like it says, it was like, I know, I know one thing about Kung Flu. And <laughs> basically it's, um, it's, it's lasting longer than anything made in China or something like that. Mm. <laughs> right? I mean, kind of a dumb premise. Not really that offensive, but obviously um, to a certain extent, it's, it's, in, it's intentionally offensive. Yeah. But, but, you know, the average Chinese person, are they going to see that and be like, I'm offended by this? I'm like personally offended? Just because it just because it had the word kung flu in there and it's it's related to coronavirus, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But um, some some people on Genius were offended by it. Now here's mm -hmm. the kicker. Again, he posted this back in September. Mm -hmm. Some random person who I don't know. Most like it's pretty much understood that that the majority of people, if not everybody, in that discussion thread that that popped up didn't know who was posting the thread, who didn't know who the OP was. So the OP um, was essentially doxing Daktar, right? Kind of cherry picking uh, something out of his Instagram and then dropping it in here. And the, the, the subject of the thread was, there is a racist moderator. And then they proceeded to basically say that Daktar is racist, um, like uh, they tagged a bunch of people, like they tagged um, Genius Moderation, they tagged, they might have tagged Genius Staff. I don't mm -hmm. recall exactly, but regardless, they basically- They put them on blast. They were putting them on blast, everybody they on, could. Yeah. They were sounding the alarm, putting them on blast over a meme. Now, and again, not even on Genius. Mm -hmm. Yo, yo. So yeah, like not even something that he did on Genius, just something on his own personal IG. Now, where Daktar kind of went wrong, really, in, in my opinion, this is why it unfolded the way it did, or part of the, a major factor, okay? Um, mm -hmm. uh, Daktar is a Trump supporter, so uh, other memes and stuff that he's posting on there is voicing support for Trump, uh, voicing support for Amy Coney Barrett, voicing um, uh, uh, frustration towards BLM and, and Black Lives Matter and that sort of mm -hmm. thing, right? typical right-wing ideologies that he's espousing to, to one extent or another, and which is his God-given right, you know? We don't have to like it or agree with it, but hey, that's his page. He's not hurting anybody. He's not proselytizing. He's not, you know what I mean? Like, so granted, I'm biased. You're, you're hearing the biased side of things. I'm I'm trying to be as objective as possible about this, but I, I but I'm obviously I was obviously uh, uh, openly frustrated about it. Yeah. So um, um, yeah, that that's that's the that's the main gist of it. So, all right. So just to make sure that everybody who's tuning in, um, so a, 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 excuse me, a moderator from Genius, a fellow moderator from Genius, posted this meme that was um, made reference to, to the coronavirus, calling it uh, the Kung Flu. Yes. Correct. Yeah, so sharing a, meme, sharing a meme that had the word Kung Flu in it and espousing, um, you know, sinister, like, um, well, skepticism, see that? To, or skepticism towards, like, the uh, origins. Or, or just, you I, know, I, just, I, just, yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of that implied, but... Um, Here's the thing about it, though. This is the other thing I forgot to mention. So you know, you know how on Instagram you can post like two pictures at once, and then multiple like, yeah, yeah. So you can like swipe, and then there's like a, a second slide or whatever. So this mm -hmm. this post, the the first post was the meme that I described to you. The second yeah. post was was an alternate version of the same meme, except it said something along the lines of like one thing I know about. Um, one thing I know about fact checkers or something, your job mm -hmm. is not to fact check memes. Now, this is the whole, according to Daktar, I did speak with him directly. This is the whole reason he posted this to begin with. He, he came across this meme. I think it was a Washington Post online article or something, or maybe the Washington Post um, uh, uh, 
social media. I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but essentially yeah. there was a, there was a fact check disclaimer on the meme. Um, so, you know, you know, when you online, especially around election time, closer and closer we got to the election, there were, you, you would see political things on social media. And when you would go to click on it, it would be like, are you sure you want to click on this? Or it would be like, right. you know, this has been flagged as possibly inaccurate or something like that. So yeah. again, it's a fucking meme. Like, so Daktar thought it was funny that, that the Washington Post was checking a meme that is rooted in absurdity, right? The whole premise of the meme uh, has to do with, with products that are made in China, uh, you know, cheap products being made in China that break easily. And the Kung Flu is lasting longer than anything else that was ever made in China before. Now, again, you can take offense to that if you want. I personally don't think it's that offensive. I think it's kind of silly. I think it's made like childish or, you know what I mean? Like, there's a well, lot of other ways thing. you can describe it. Well, um, okay, so then that happened. So that, so yes. then that all right, so that yeah. happened. All let, that let happened. Me give a little, yeah, yeah, let me give a little more context. Let me give yeah, a little yeah. more context real fast. Okay, so, so basically um, this person put, was putting Dactar on blast. He's not even aware of it because he's not, he's less and less active. He's one of the older moderators on the site. He's like, if, if I'm not mistaken, he's, he's approaching like 40 years in age. He's, he's a man. He's from Texas. He's a grown ass man. Now he, which means, you know, he's got real shit to be doing with his life. Now, when he got, when he got wind of it, I think it was really late at night. And then he basically was like, Hey, you know, it's late over here. I'm tired. I don't know what this is about exactly, but you know, I'll try to address it tomorrow type of thing. Or he kind of was like, I'm sorry. I think he, I think he did apologize, like saying, mm. you know, I'm sorry if this has offended anybody. And then he said, like, I personally don't see how it's racist. Um, but whatever, dot, dot, dot type of thing. He was perfectly mm. respectful in, in that moment. Now, the further and further things got in the thread, the more and more frustrated he was. I felt that he was being backed into a corner type of thing. And it got to the point where he's kind of like, I mean, he wasn't there. It wasn't so much like animosity so much as he was just like defending himself saying like, look, like, I'm not going to just like let you guys censor me. A lot of these people are, are literally children. A lot of them are 15, 16 years old or yeah. whatever. They're, they're maybe in college. They're young, they're young kids. So I, I mean, I think it's safe to say we have a, a little more world or life experience with them than them, rather. So um, now, where am I going with this? Basically, it, it, it boiled down to, look, it, either Daktar is racist or he's not. Are, 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 are we really going to say that just because he uh, or, or that anybody who supports Trump is automatically racist or that just because he shared a meme with racial undertones, does that make him racist? Not necessarily. Well, well, he, well, right. And and here's the thing about this is that one of the and this is the reason why there is you know such a strong reaction to that and to you know I mean Trump's just knowing Trump and the whole journey of Trump and going going from a meme to literally becoming the most you know powerful supposedly the most powerful man in the world. Um, and he certainly caused a lot of damage. Um, but fortunately, he wasn't able to do everything he wanted. But it's because his intent and the results of his actions and, his, and the way of his thinking was obvious from the jump, you know. And it's for some people, it's taken them years to finally realize this. You know, you see some people that are taking down their Trump flags, taking down their 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 um, don't tread on me flags or something else that's associated with like extreme far right conservative sentiments. And replacing them with shit. I just saw one the other one of my somebody that was around me. They had they had a uh, don't tread on me and a uh, and a Trump flag. And now what they have is a Oregon Ducks, which is a college football team. So I guess it's a football <laughs> yeah. season coming up. And the other one is now a American flag, but I think it's a black one with the blue stripes. So it's basically a Blue Lives Matter flag, but with the it's the one that has the least amount of blue in it. It's just one like half of a blue stripe in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, and so, and so the thing is, and there have been more hate crimes against all groups of minorities, you know, saying not to mention all the political related violence, 
and right. and, and that's mostly been from con- it's overwhelmingly conservatives because they're the ones that are usually always committing those type of crimes that are motivated on gender or race or religion or political ideology. Exactly. Um, and, and again, and, and, so, and, all... and, the, and the thing is, and the thing is when Trump was calling this shit, the, the Kung flu, you know, this is already three years into his, to his, um, his, his term. Right. And we've already seen scores of increased, you know, right wing violence, right wing infiltration, the police and military, um, you know, high profile shit like the Central Park Karen incident where a white woman um, uh, called the police on a black dude because he was telling her to put a leash on her dog. Um, and um, that thing blew up. And actually, as a matter of fact, this happened the same day um, as the George Floyd murder when he got choked to death with the cop uh, kneeling on his neck. Actually, I think it happened. I th- actually, I think it happened because I talked about I talked about the Central Park Karen when I made a. Uh, video essay on it like yeah. half an hour and um no i think it actually happened like uh i, I need to double check I, I think maybe it was a few days but it was just around and so it was just this you know interesting interesting juxtaposition between an example of racism that is usually not videotaped on the side of like liberals because this is in new york city and everything there's a liberal you know woman um yeah. i think but at least a liberal city setting and then the other one, which is Milwaukee, which is, you know, also, it's, it, I think it's like a team theater or whatever, but the political shit isn't so much a, a, a concern as that, you know, there's been deep, it, it showed the political, the um, police file. So it showed two different extremes, right? And the thing is, <clears throat> so in between all of that shit, right, when the coronavirus started hitting, after Trump, um, they got in secret intel briefings and everything. He knew how serious it was. There was an yeah. uh, uh, interview he did with Bob Woodward, who, who was the one on Watergate, on Nixon's ass, back in the day. He's a legendary journalist. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the interview came out, I think, a month, a month and a half ago. Trump knew the seriousness of coronavirus from the jump. That means at least November or December. And what did he yeah. do? He deflected. He said, no, it's the China virus or the Kung flu. And people just said, oh, it's just a meme. It's just a joke. But just like, you know, Trump was a meme and he became the president and, and a lot of bodies dropped and a lot of, you know, white nationalism, white wing, you know, race extremism, political violence and shit has been on the rise. And then he says this uh, shit. And then what also happened as a result of this meme? Guess yeah. what the fuck happened? Not just Chinese people, because most people can't really, you know, don't really make a distinction between Asian groups. People of Asian descent uh, started seeing increased uh, violence committed against them. Correct. By and it wasn't just and it's not it should and it should be said that it wasn't just by conservative uh, white people. It was there was also just a lot of ignorant black people, um, you know, in the streets and shit and and, and you know, making you know and they similar made that connection. Similar to nine eleven, similar to nine eleven, with uh, um, people who who maybe even just appeared Middle Eastern. Exactly. You know, I mean, most people, who, most Americans we talk to today probably still can uh, identify the difference between a Muslim, an average Muslim versus a Sikh. A Sikh. Um, oh, but, I did want to, I did want to interject for a, a brief moment here because yeah, yeah. I, to, just to clarify something, because if I'm not mistaken, the whole Kung flu thing originally, like the first, um, the first, I guess, widespread um, coverage about the term and, and all that stuff, it came because there was a there was a press like a uh, some sort of a presser where I think it was like a reporter was asking I, it might not even have been Trump right it was it was his uh, uh, press secretary or something like that they were asking them that they or they were saying that they had heard that the term was being thrown around behind the scenes and at the time if I'm not mistaken they kind of said like. I don't know if they denied it outright or if they they just kind of shrugged it off or something, but it wasn't necessarily that from the beginning that Trump had said it. Now this doesn't change the overall implication and the the you know the context that you were describing, um, other than to say that it's not like Donald Trump came out and just said it. It was like they started covering it and questioning whether or not people in his administration were using the term, and then after that he despite 
the fact that you know there was backlash over the possibility of them saying it, then Trump still proceeded to use the term, right? Like he used it a couple times or something it, uh, well, the, the, uh, on the, video. The, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I could be wrong. Well, well, the thing is, it doesn't. The thing is, it doesn't even. It doesn't even matter because he should have. Not, not even that we should have because we know who Trump is, but that a decent political leader who is recognizing all the things that are going on, like I, like I just mentioned, in the, if they were decent, if they were a decent moral character, they wouldn't go around doing that because they would understand that not everybody is just going to recognize the, you know, I guess, edgy humor of it. Um, yeah. But the thing is, is that, like, you, would, you should at least be able to look out at your country, at the United States, and be like, you know, there's a lot of ignorant motherfuckers here that will laugh at that, but then also make that a real association because they don't actually know anything about these, you know, groups or about, you know, science or, you know, or, or they're just really dogmatic. And, and to say, you know, and this is, and this is really, really what this is, is that this isn't so much a free speech thing. This is about, um, this is about, uh, this, that's a, that's a, that's a dog whistle. He was deflecting. Like I said before, it's been known that coronavirus is serious and that, um, you know, Trump, in addition to doing many things, you know, uh, defunded the organization that, you know, studies viruses and whatnot, making it harder, didn't, um, you know, do national lockdowns. He only did ones against China at the beginning, but that was related to, um, ongoing trade deals and shit, so it wasn't related to COVID-19, right? And then even knowing, getting these security briefings and knowing the seriousness and seeing what it can do and saying, oh, well, uh, yeah, we'll lose a quarter million lives, you know, saying whatever, which, you know, we've, we've already surpassed that. Um, yeah. It's, it's, um, it, it, this is really just like reckless, you know, purposeful endangerment. You knew something fucked up was going to happen. You had a means of preventing it, and, and he didn't just stand out of the way. He helped worsen it and continues yeah. to stand in the way of it. You know, in addition to not giving people second package stimulus. But here's the thing is, is that it's not simply about free speech because it's about understanding the results of. It's like, okay, when you give somebody, when you say, okay, so people have free speech, there, there's always but that you have to add to that. It's like, but if your speech causes intimidation or causes you know, certain groups of people to be identified or to be associated with, you know, really negative, destructive shit, you know, and you can't go, and, and the thing is, no group is a monolith, so it's like, you know, you can't do that, and you're not supposed to do that. Um, that's not being politically correct, that's understanding the ramifications of your words, because some people will take your words. You can't just, you can't just consider the people who will not act on shit. You have to think about how many people are out there that will act on shit. No, you're are you're referring to Trump specifically, right? I'm referring to all. I, I mean, really, I think this kind of cuts through all of it because what I'm trying to say is that not all free speech, um, everything comes with caveats and exceptions. And the thing that we say about free speech is just like um, you can't use it to like you know threaten a, you know violence in a very specific way in a very specific time or like yell fire in a crowded movie theater. You know, another implication is that of that should be not only can you do outright hate speech, but we also need to be really critical of speech that is used to. Because the thing is, what other association is there? Excuse me. Even if he didn't say, "Oh, it's the China virus. It came from China." Even if the only other thing he said was the kung flu, what is the only association that most people have with kung fu? Asian, just Asian, Asian people Asian in general. Culture. Just Asian culture in general. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even though they each have their own different, you know, things, styles of, of that shit and, and, and different other, any other distinctions. The yeah. point is, is that in the context of all this, shit, we have all of this, all the destruction of Trump's, path, of Trump's presidency thus far, right? His response to the coronavirus, right? We know all of this. And then, you know, saying, you know, this dude would, you know, share that. It, it, I don't necessarily agree with, like, the whole, maybe, the doxing thing. You know, I think maybe that's, yeah. you know, a bit too far. At the same time, it's like, no, we've seen that his literal words have been used to justify, you know, saying, running over protesters with their cars, 
shooting, you know what I'm saying, you know, rivals. Yeah. Uh, planning, to ki- planning to kidnap heads of state, you know what I'm saying? Um, now, just in case okay. this isn't, really quickly, just in case it's not clear, yeah. we agree here on, like, all of this. The, ish- the issue right. was some random person who we don't know you know, tagging everybody in the entire site. This is, we're talking potentially millions of users. Well, okay, actually, you know what? Let me take that back. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this user probably created the thread in a, in a public forum, and then I think it got moved to a semi-public forum. So it got, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it got moved to, uh, to the Genius Moderation Forum where only editors and moderators can see it, which means that, you know, that boils down to thousands of users, not millions of users that would potentially see it. And again, this is essentially libel. This is because the subject line of the of the discussion thread was there is a racist moderator. The opening topic sentence of the of the of the OP was essentially this guy is super racist. Look at his social media. He shared all this stuff. Blah blah blah. Now, and then, and then on top of that, there something needs to be done about it, which is kind of like you know, verging on cancel culture, that sort of stuff. Which you know, yeah. call it what you want, call it a boycott, call it consequences for actions, whatever. But at the end of the day, I know Daktar personally. I know that he's not racist, and um, and I know that that he has you know, like many people do, like even like I do, he has a dark sense of humor, or he has a willingness to to, you know, look at certain things and, and, and not be offended by them necessarily, uh, even though he n- understands the context of it all. Uh, and I'm, I'm obviously speaking for him, but I feel, I feel safe to do it in this regard. So um, according to Daktar, he shared it because it was, it was something that made him laugh at, in, in the moment. He found it to be absurd. And so he shared it because it was about censorship for him. It was about, you know, the Washington Post putting a fact check on a meme and how it's like, come on, guys, you're a, you're a credible institution. You really don't need to do that. Uh, the meme is stupid. The meme is childish. The meme is, you know well, what I mean? Well, not, well, not quite. I mean, it's, it's, it's more than that. And that's the thing about, like, here's the thing, is that laughter, you know, over, you know, the, the spontaneous response of, you know, to humor and everything, that's spontaneous. Right, but the spontaneity. But the thing is, is that like all humor is like everything else in life is contextual. So you are, in order for certain jokes to hit, or for you to understand the context of them, um, they either have to be something that you're already familiar with, or be something that's um, more closer to the lowest common denominator, or to a certain a, com- a common denominator, not necessarily the lowest one, but a common denominator um, that you can make an association with. Um, a lot of people laugh at jokes about black people without actually ever meeting any, you know, black people, um, you know, in their lives or actually spending any time around them. And it's like, yeah, while they may, you know, you may laugh and be like, oh, they're not actually, you know, this way. You also have to see, I, I would say that, and this isn't the, you know, making, um, and this isn't to make implications about them that, you know, that they, you know, that they are, but it's, sometimes you only see certain parts of people in certain situations, Right. Um, I almost lost, I almost got away from the middle of the thing I was going to say. Um, so yeah, so laughter and shit is spontaneous, but the, the humor is contextual. And so you have to ask, okay, why were you, it's like, why, it's like, yeah, okay, I get that, you know, oh, it's just a joke or whatever, but it's like, you know, I would, I laugh at that because I like the fact that the Washington Post and Facebook and all these different sites and shit are putting these fact check shit up here because they have recognized the fact that people have been acting, that people do respond to memes, people do make associations, people do pick up information. And I, like when, they do it. It's, I it's, like when they do it to Trump. I like when they do it on Twitter because he's full of shit and he's saying the But Trump isn't the only one, but, but Trump isn't the only one doing it. it, it no, it, no, of course not. Never, but... And he was never... And he was never just the only one doing it. And, the, and once again, my point, my point is that you, you know, um, like uh, you, you can't make a mountain out of a molehill. Or it's not that you can't, but I don't think you should be making mountains out of molehills when you're a credible institution like the Washington Post. I really should have looked. 
I really should have reviewed it. The, the problem, the, I should have reviewed the thread. The problem here, they they locked the thread down, and now no one can access it again. So I'm I'm just going off of my my gut memory here, which is that I'm pretty sure it was the Washington Post. Imagine it was the New York Times. It could have been anybody. But, but the the point is that I don't think Dr. was sharing it so much because the meme made him laugh so much as he found it to be absurd that an institution was putting a fact check disclaimer on a stupid meme. So to him, wait, how would he know? Wait, how did he know that they were doing that before he posted it though? Like, how did he know that they were going to do that? I, to that? Did, how he, I mean, across, I guess like he, I guess he probably already seen it posted and then reposted it with the yeah. Second, second one. He he came I mean, across again, it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't have a problem with this because hey, what's going on? Um, I don't have a problem with this. I don't because again, Trump is not the only one that does it. There are plenty of people in all parts of society that do that. It's spreading um, disinformation. And again, like yeah. it, 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 it's it's you know again, it's, it's, it's like dangerous. What, what is it? But hold, but hold on, but hold on, hold on. No, no, exactly, it's dangerous rhetoric. And the thing is, for it to be spread at all without a without like criticizing it or showing it to be false. And, and this is the thing people sometimes don't get about like satire and, and parody and everything is that satire is about criticism and pointing out the fallacies or the follies of your target. It doesn't necessarily have to be funny. Whereas parody is intentionally about mocking the subject through emulating it. And, you know, it can be, the thing is there can be parodies that are um, respectful and that are, um, um, honor, you know, honoring the subject, and they can also be the complete opposite. But parodies yeah. are, are, you know, but parodies are concerned with, like, you know, stretching the bounds of who that person was or showing them in a much more um, uh, sillier, you know, context than they were actually ever, you know, in and shit, right? Right. So, again, with this thing is that, like, he's saying, like, oh, you know, it's, it's a, you know, this framework of, oh, it's absurd that a, reputable newspaper is checking memes is that no they're actually doing what they're supposed to they're, just, they're, they're finding popular uses of uh media of what people actually use to communicate with themselves you know what I'm saying they know that less people are reading newspapers so how are people having these how are people sharing information how are people passing jokes how are people you know what i'm saying excuse me exchanging with one another oh these memes and shit and everybody uses memes i don't feel like it's i don't feel like you know you know, memes can memes can be used in a variety of situations, serious or you know, uh, and dark to lighthearted and silly. So I don't think that it's um beneath them to be fact checking this, and especially this one because it includes dangerous rhetoric. So right there, and it's dangerous rhetoric that isn't being corrected or being challenged or being shown why it's wrong. You know, because the implication, as you pointed out, is supposed to be like, oh, why is this reputable newspaper, you know, saying checking on memes? That's beneath them. That's a distraction. Because, because as you just said, it's dangerous rhetoric. There's, there's no, but, you know, ifs, ands, and buts about that. And so a reputable newspaper should be looking at, like, the major streams of communication between regular people um, and being like, okay, what's, you know, going on and make sure that we're doing our part as, as, as you know, fact checkers, essentially, um, in society as, as a reputable newspaper and mm -hmm. making sure this shit is being challenged. Okay, because you know, so there's me, only one. Because again, because again, there's one specific connotation of kung flu, and that is Asian people, and specifically Chinese people, have brought are the ones are the ones um, that brought the coronavirus over um, to the United States. It's a conspiracy, and it's the reason for why all the deaths and shit are going up in the hospitals are filling up, and we got all kinds of people dying and 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 and, and shit. When it's like, no, it's been the mismanagement of your dear leader, but you're part yeah. of a fucking personality cult, um, and you and you participate in the spreading of the disinformation that he mm -hmm. says. And this is the thing that they've been doing for a decade now. It's that, oh, we're being ironic. It's being satirical. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are taking it too seriously. When it's just, it's just, it's just uh, feeding uh, dangerous rhetoric under the guise of it's just for laughs. You know what I'm saying? It's just for the lulls. Okay, you know? so let me say something real fast here because I'm 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 hearing you out. I'm I'm you're making a lot of sense, and again, for the most part, we agree. But I have to I have to admit something here. I actually disagree with you somewhat on what you're saying. Like um, the mm -hmm. to the extent that that um, 
that uh, the newspapers should be doing this or that, you know, that sort of thing. Now, I don't want to go too far into that because it's really not important. It really doesn't, in my opinion, change anything about um, about our discussion or about what, what unfolded there. Um, well, no, I did, well, hold on. I, I think it is important because then what is the role of a reputable news well, okay, here, uh, here's why I don't think it's important. Or journalists. Or here's why I, uh, yeah, here's why I don't think it's important. It's, uh, I, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, die on that hill right now. But the, the hill I was willing to die on, which is that, uh, is that Daktar is not racist. Now, um, we can get into whether or not he should or shouldn't have shared the meme, what, what his intentions were in sharing it, um, why he sh why he I think you made it clear though what his intent you made it clear what his intentions are you, you said it and it, and it hey, and really when expression you, and when you mentioned the second text <laughs> and when you mentioned and when you mentioned the second second meme it's pretty clear what his intentions are because like you said it was it was presented it was it was presented with the pointing out the absurdism of yeah so of, he found it to be of, absurd of, of, of fact check right but, but right so that so but that's his so, opinion so, that's he's in, he's entitled to that opinion now um, again, this is this that doesn't is mean it can't be that. That, that doesn't mean it can't be challenged though. No, and of course not. So, but 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 hear me out. Hear me out. So you think um, it seems to me that you you are saying that you you don't think it's absurd. You don't think it's absurd that the newspaper would put a fact check disclaimer thing where you have to like press the button to like actually see the meme that sort of thing. That's fair. I I respect that. Dactard does think it's absurd. I think I lie somewhere in the middle where I'm just kind of like. What middle, it's what, what middle is it? What? Yeah, it's not ambivalence. It's um, for me, it just doesn't really change the fundamental uh, uh, context of of what unfolded on Genius because because in that sense, like it, you know, it is what it is in terms of you know whatever Daktar posted. You know, we can't go back and change that. So let's let's focus on 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 what we know, which is that. He thought it was absurd. He wanted to share it. He thought it was kind of funny. Whatever. This remember, this is back in September. At, this is two months ago, essentially. Um, then it is it, it is pulled from his personal page. It is broadcast publicly, and he's basically being demonized. And there, you know, it's it's defamation or libel or whatever. In my opinion, you can't just you shouldn't just be saying outright that somebody is racist. You're basically calling them to be fired. And, um, and yeah, w w you can't do that and not expect people to come to his defense, right? People who actually know him to say, look, we don't, I, I don't agree with him on everything. There's a lot that we don't agree on, but he's not racist. And are we really going to, are we really going to do this? Are we going to really go down this road where we as a genius community, right? We're on one platform. Are we going to really start um, uh, not just monitoring, but dictating what other people share and, you know what I mean? Start like I just think it's a it's a slippery slope, and so my whole point was, look, this is free speech. It's his IG page. We don't have to agree with it. We don't have to like it. It really doesn't. It almost doesn't matter. Just ignore it. it you know what I mean? Like like have your opinion on it, or or yeah, even if you want, put him on blast. I guess, but like there you're gonna have people who disagree with you when you're saying something that is wrong and a, and a lie. Which is that? Well, I think race, they. Well, I, well, I think the people, and we have just under ten minutes left on the stream. Um, oh, okay, it sounds like okay. we may have to go. It sounds like we may have to go into a second one. Um, part two. I'll go ahead and down. Uh, part. Two. Well, I'll make that in a little bit. But everybody listening, that's still listening. We're gonna. There's gonna be a part two to this. Um. um yeah. So I mean, at, at this point, considering, I mean, that's you know, that's quite a few things. Like I said, I do think that it's, I still want to go back to the because the thing is. <clears throat> it, it, again, this goes back to the issue of why is what makes it different. I don't think there's any misunderstanding that there are going to be detractors or people that are supporting the position held uh, by this uh, moderator, right, in, in making that post. Um, you know, concerning concerning first of all, like people oh taking stuff from like your personal profile and everything, even if it's like only between you and friends. At this point, my attitude is you have to be. Given what we know about the society and technology and what different companies and shit are doing, you, we really kind of have to, and what the government is doing, you know, um, is that everything is being recorded. And that if you've given the target of somebody who can 
afford to dig through that information long enough, they can, you know, can put together any story about you. So basically, even when you're putting stuff on your small, you know, saying, you know, page or whatever, and there's only other, you know, other people who see your shit, I think you kind of have to operate with the uh, um, assumption that it could eventually be used. Anything you say could be used against you. Uh, I think that to me, that, to me, that's just kind of like it's almost like the equivalent of like you going off and spouting off your shit in a town square, and then you know, saying getting mad at people for challenging you. But that's just the, that's just what happens when you put your ideas out there. Um, like yeah. I said, some okay, people, so, some so people, here's the other people thing. To, well, well, hold, well, hold on, because you brought up a lot okay, of okay, okay. Let me sure I want to get to right? Okay. So, so, on, so as far as that part goes, I'm like. That doesn't really bother me too much. My my issue, you know, saying would be it's like, oh, once you start like, oh, if somebody doesn't have their home address posted anywhere, but you go through their shit and you find that, or you post like their bank information, or you know, really sensitive shit like that. But as far as people sharing stuff from like, you know, your social media, no matter how small it is, I think you kind of have to anticipate that it could be used against you. So that's you know, that's just kind of the sure. um, that's just kind of the risk that you take. We take with this shit in general. Um, and again, you know, you know, like with, with me and, and talking about humor and comedy and stuff and absurdism, that's not a free pass, you know, you know, absurd, you know, because the thing, it isn't just that it's absurd. There's also dangerous rhetoric and false information that isn't being challenged. Um, because again, the association of Kung Flu is one that is made specifically with a group of people whom are, you know, maligned and are targeted uh, already discriminated against to a certain degree and face increased discrimination and violence uh, from people from this yeah. association. So it's like, okay, how much can you just wave off the absurdism part of it, uh, which I don't even think is absurd, but I'll get to that in just a second. But even granted that, which outweighs the other? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can say that it has these different parts, but that which outweighs the other? Clearly the dangerous rhetoric and the false information outweigh the absurdism because that's not how, um, because of the increased, you know, thing, reaction, you know, to the shit. But then really the, the biggest point is going back to the journalism thing and not thinking, you know, what's wrong for them to do that. Because this is something that was broadcast no matter, how, no matter where it came from. There's no reason for Trump as a, as a you know, national leader and has a huge platform business that he does. And, you know, knowing what we know about his, um, his tenure so far and about what his uh, followers do in response to shit that he says. Yeah. There's no way, there's no, it's, it's irresponsible and reckless for him to go to, uh, to say that shit. Wait, now are you referring you know to Trump and, or Jack Tar? Well, hold on, I'm getting there. And so <laughs> the thing is, and, and, okay. and so the thing is, like you said, sharing this meme that is that, oh, it's quote unquote absurd or whatever. Again, the absurdism to me is weighed out by the dangerous rhetoric and the association made with it, and that it's not even being critical of it. That, as you said, it's trying to be critical of a reputable newspaper, but lip, you know, so what, bringing what it. What do you think you know, the solution on, would be in that situation, or in this specific situation for Daktar? I mean, to, I mean, to me, like, I mean. I don't know. The thing is, I haven't heard. The thing is, like, hearing what I've heard, there's nothing that's really, um, no, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have any major objections, you know. Um, and like I said, I, I completely agree with, first of all, the Washington Post, you know, saying doing that fact check and all the, and all the different journal, you know, journalist organizations and, and places where, and social media and everything, um, fact checking stuff. I love that. Um, they should have been doing this. They should have been doing this. They should have been doing this from the very beginning, not just with the coronavirus, but of like when they first fucking started. Um, okay. So now, so the again, thing is, so the thing, so the thing is, I gotta, I, sorry, go on. Yeah. No, that was. I was. Yeah. So I. I mean, the thing is, I agree with that. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I. You know, I don't know. You know. You know, this, this moderated Daktar. Um, it's like, but it. You know, it, it's. it's you know, it's, it's, at a certain point, it's hard to, uh, you know, think about somebody who would consistently share information in that vein or share content, you know, in that, um, uh, uh, that espouses those views. And even if they aren't uh, racist or bigoted or whatever, but that they're still, a, they're still supporting that shit and spreading that type of, uh, you know, communication and information. 
Um, See, that's another thing I think we would disagree on. I don't think it means that he supports it. I don't think it means that he agrees with it. I think that, and and in fact, I'm certain that he doesn't because we spoke and he Wait, said. Well, who consistently no. share? But who consistently shares? Who who has who consistently, you know, saying um, fills up their feeds and stuff with stuff that they don't believe in, and without because even satirical sites like um, Babylon B or or um, What's the other the major onion. one? The onion. the onion. They make they 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 call themselves a satire site. So you're understood from the jump that m most of the shit they're going to be sharing is going to be from a satirical point of view, you know, right. or that they're at least going to be attempting that. Um, I haven't heard anything so far of, you know, if, if, oh, if he if he wanted to point out, oh, it's absurdity, then that means that either he doesn't get the greater implications of it. Or they actually do support that, and they're just hiding behind the tongue-in-cheek, you know, absurdism, or it's just for the lull. But you see, know? and the thing is, is that and the thing is that law, like, that would not stand up. And you know, I'm I was trying, you know, low key, I was wait, trying again? to approach. I said in a court of law that would not hold up to to because it's conjecture. You're you're obviously wait to what to say, you know, uh, kind of what what his intentions were or were not based on what Dactar told or that he was hiding behind something and, and trying to cover up how he actually No, no, I'm not felt. saying, no, no, that's, well, no, I'm not, I wasn't saying other. I'm just talking about the I know you're saying hypo, Yeah, you're saying hypothetically. So, but, um, which I get that. But um, I wanted to also clarify that, again, Dactar apologized multiple times. That, you know, I think he said basically like, um, uh, if if I offended anybody or whatever, I'm really sorry type of thing. Um, he privatized his page. He took out the the he took his Instagram link off of his genius profile and vice versa. Like there was a genius link, I think, on his Instagram page. And that was something that other users were saying like, oh, well, because he's linking to and from these these platforms now he should be held responsible or, or there should be some accountability there, which, again, that's their opinion. And we don't have, we don't all have to agree. However, the, the, the thing that we fundamentally disagreed on was like, yo, are we going to do, are we really going to kick this guy off the site over a meme? Are we really going to try to like tell people what they can and can't post on a completely different platform of, on their own time? Uh, it's their personal shit, you know, like, and it has nothing to do with music yeah. or genius or hip hop or anything like to me, that is more absurd and more offensive than the meme itself. I, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree with that. I think. Um, Which part exactly? You know, you know, I, I, yeah, I, again, you know, when it comes to like doxing and stuff or um, when it comes to doxing and stuff, you know, that, that relates more to specific, like very sensitive information. Um, and so even then, it. I don't know if that. And even then, I don't even know if that applies. And we got about ninety seconds left in this stream. So anybody listening, we're going to do a second stream um, in about a minute um, after this okay. one is done, because you can only do an hour on IG. So please join in for part two. So but, wait, um, really quickly, really quickly, you said you yeah. disagreed. You said you disagreed. I just want to clarify because I was saying that I think it's absurd to you know essentially cancel him or 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 initiate a witch hunt against him, calling him racist. Mm -hmm. I think um, so. More, and well, to me, that's is, more offensive than him actually just sharing the meme, which, again, was um, was back-ended by this idea about censorship. And again, well, now not, he's well, being well, censored. Well, there's, there's some uh, irony there. Well, hold on. Well, hold on. Again, it doesn't matter what his... It doesn't even matter what his intentions are. That, was, that wasn't even the question. It's the understanding the implications of this. As I said before, um, yeah, I can grant you that, that part of this, that part of the meme was about absurdism. And we got 10 seconds left, y'all. So um, yeah, want to join in uh, for, this, for the second one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Round two.